Uh, one of the reasons that I had joined this, this committee when I first came to Congress is because I have a strong interest in working to improve math and science education in, in this country. Uh, I'm, only, I'm one of only a dozen engineers in the uh, House and Senate. And uh, my wife was a math major in college, and unlike me, her STEM training led her directly into a career as an actuary. Uh, so from my own family experience and what I have seen and heard from others, uh, I'm very aware of how important it is that we do a good job of engaging and educating students at all levels in STEM fields. But with the release last month of the latest PISA results, we were reminded yet again of the troubling statistics on the state of U.S. math and science education. U.S. K-12 students rank in the middle of the pack in international comparisons of math and science aptitude. We see the problems at all job levels. I'm constantly hearing from uh, manufacturing companies in my district that uh, they have a hard time finding employees who have even basic math and science skills. In higher education, we have far too few students pursuing and completing degrees in certain STEM fields to meet the needs of domestic industry. For example, less than 2.4 percent of college students graduate with a degree in computer science, despite tremendous demand for these skills, and that number has dropped over the last decade. Our troubles start from the earliest grades and are part of a negative feedback cycle that we have to break. Students who aren't learning the necessary skills by the time they graduate high school are much less likely to pursue and to succeed in STEM fields in college. When we lose an undergraduate student from a STEM field, we lose a scientist or engineer who could potentially pursue a career in teaching the next generation. We know these to be complex problems with no easy or one-size-fits-all solution. That's why partnerships between the private sector, federal and state governments, colleges, universities, local school districts, national labs, science museums, zoos and aquaria, and all types of nonprofits are more important today than ever. The U.S. still has some of the best K-12 schools, colleges, and universities in the world. And our top students at all levels compete easily with the top students from around the world. That's why I'm glad we have witnesses here today that can speak to the types of STEM partnerships needed to engage young minds at an early age and keep them engaged in STEM fields. In particular, Northwestern University's Office of STEM Education Partnerships connects K-12 teachers and students to the world-class STEM resources of Northwestern University in corporations in the state of Illinois, such as Boeing, Baxter, Google, Hewlett-Packard, IBM, and more. Especially proud as a uh, graduate of, of Northwestern with my degree in mechanical engineering. Now, today's uh, hearing focuses on private sector and university STEM engagement programs. I look forward to hearing from these accomplished individuals who have dedicated their careers to improving STEM engagement and learning in their communities across the district across the nation. I also look forward to hearing from students who have participated in a first robotics competition. But I also want to say a few words about the Federal role in this partnership. The Federal Government invests $3 billion in STEM education across 14 agencies. While that is a large dollar figure, it is important to put that number in perspective. Less than half of that is focused at the K-12 level. Federal investments in K-12 education overall account for only 10 percent of total U.S. funding for K-12 education, and the Federal share of STEM funding is likely much less than 10 percent. So the Federal role is limited, but it is also unique and necessary. The National Science Foundation is the single most important source of research, development, and testing of innovative new models for STEM education. The Federal Government also has an unrivaled ability to convene stakeholders to leverage private sector investment in STEM education. Entrepreneurs like Mr. Kamen and Mr. Partovi did not have to start from scratch. They are smart businessmen investing in, perfecting, and expanding evidence-based ideas and programs. So while the Federal Government cannot begin to solve our STEM education challenges alone, we would be remiss to ignore the important role the Government does play. I hope this committee will continue to exercise its oversight authority to ensure that we get the most out of our relatively small but critical Federal STEM education programs. I want to thank Chairman Bouchon again for calling this hearing and the witnesses as well for taking the time today to offer their insights and experiences. And with that, I will yield back.